Have you ever wondered how we're able to capture the vibrant world beneath the waves? From coral reefs to deep sea creatures that glow in the dark, underwater cameras make it all possible. But here's the big question. How does technology actually make that happen? Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating engineering behind underwater cameras. Not just the waterproof case or housing, but the actual science and technology that allow cameras to see clearly, focus properly, and survive under pressure. Literally. So let's break down what really makes underwater cameras work where regular ones can't, right here on History of Simple Things. Before we get into how underwater cameras work, let's talk about why they're needed in the first place. Because taking a regular camera underwater is a recipe for disaster. First off, water and electronics. Oh, we all know they are not friends. A tiny leak can fry a camera instantly. Then there's the pressure. Even just 10 meters below the surface, the pressure doubles compared to the surface level. That can crack a standard lens or crush a camera housing. And don't forget about light. Water absorbs light fast, especially red, orange, and yellow. That's why underwater shots often look blue or green unless the right lighting is used. So, the challenge was clear. If we wanted to capture life beneath the waves, we needed to completely rethink how cameras were built. The most obvious solution, keep the water out. And that's where waterproof housings come in. But these aren't just plastic shells, they're engineered with precision. Underwater camera housings are typically made of polycarbonate, aluminum, or even carbon fiber. They need to be completely sealed with O-rings, rubber-like gaskets at every joint to prevent leaks. These O-rings are coated in silicone grease to maintain a tight seal. A single piece of sand or a hair can ruin everything. Many housings also come with pressure relief valves or vacuum systems. These allow divers to test whether the seal is holding before jumping into the water. If there's a pressure drop inside the housing during the test, it's a no-go, something's leaking. But it's not just about keeping water out. Buttons, wheels, and screens on the housing have to be accessible while wearing gloves underwater. So every control on the camera has a corresponding watertight mechanical button on the housing. Now let's talk about lenses. Water bends light differently than air. It has a higher refractive index. That means that without correction, straight lines look curved and everything appears closer and larger. To fix this, underwater cameras often use dome ports. These are curved optical grade glass or acrylic domes that sit in front of the lens. They restore the field of view and correct for distortion. Some also allow split shots half above and half below the water by creating a larger surface for water to curve around. But the lens has to be matched with the dome. Too wide, and you'll get vignetting. Too flat, and you'll lose focus. Underwater photographers often switch lenses and ports depending on what they're shooting. Macro for tiny shrimp, wide angle for manta rays. At sea level, we barely notice atmospheric pressure. But underwater, Pressure builds quickly. Every 10 meters adds another atmosphere of pressure. That's a lot of force pushing in on a camera. To resist this, underwater housings are thick and often reinforced with internal bracing. Even the lens ports are tested to high depths. Professional dive cameras, like those used in deep sea exploration or documentaries, are rated for 100 meters or more. You may have noticed that raw underwater footage looks flat and blue. That's because water absorbs light unevenly. Red disappears within a few meters, then orange, then yellow. By the time you're 20 meters down, everything's tinted blue or green. To combat this, underwater cameras use powerful external lights. 
often LED panels mounted on arms. These lights restore the full spectrum of color, especially for close-up shots. For wide shots, filters come into play. Red filters are used in blue water, while magenta filters are used in green water. These filters rebalance the color spectrum, so footage looks natural, not like it was shot on an alien planet. More advanced cameras also shoot in raw format, giving editors more flexibility in post-processing to bring out true colors. Here's something you might not think about. Autofocus doesn't behave the same underwater. Because of refraction, the apparent position of a subject is different underwater than in air. So autofocus systems need to be fast and accurate, even when light is limited and particles are floating around. Modern underwater cameras use contrast detection or phase detection systems to keep moving fish in focus. And for video, stabilization is key. Even the calmest diver moves slightly with currents and breathing. Built-in stabilization, along with weighted rigs and handles, helps keep footage smooth. Some rigs even use gimbals, though these are rare for deep dives due to their bulk and complexity. There are two main types of underwater cameras, compact and modular. Compact systems like GoPros or small waterproof point-and-shoots are sealed by design. They're simple, lightweight, and ideal for casual divers or vloggers. Some even go 10-15 meters deep without extra housing. Modular systems, on the other hand, are for professionals. These use high-end DSLRs or mirrorless cameras inside custom housings. They're paired with swappable ports, strobes, arms, and lights. They offer unmatched quality, but they're bulky and expensive. The choice depends on what you're shooting and how deep you're going. Beyond recreational diving, there's a whole world of scientific and industrial underwater cameras. These are the ones used on ROVs, remotely operated vehicles, and submersibles. These cameras are built to survive crushing depths thousands of meters below the surface. They use thick titanium or pressure-resistant glass housings, and they often transmit data via cable to operators on the surface. Instead of just recording images, they might include sonar, temperature sensors, or even robotic arms for collecting samples. They're not just cameras, they're scientific instruments. So, how do cameras work underwater? through smart engineering, clever optics, and a whole lot of waterproofing. From the housing that keeps electronics dry, to the domes and filters that make light behave, to the sensors and stabilization systems that keep everything sharp and smooth, underwater cameras are small marvels of design. They let us explore a world we can't live in, a world that's constantly shifting, weightless, and full of life, Thanks to this technology, we can witness it all without ever getting wet. So the next time you see a breathtaking underwater shot, whether it's a diver swimming through a coral cave or a whale shark passing by, remember, there's a lot more going on behind that lens than meets the eye. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.